Hey, we have a fire. Don't freak out. If you have a fire, don't just immediately panic. Just chill. It will go away. You can always turn the heat off. Hello, glorious people. Josh here. Hope you are doing well today. And even if you're not, just know it's okay. Whatever you're feeling right now is freaking perfect and that's amazing. I want to remind you that you are an awesome person. And just by being here and learning how to cook great food, your life is going to get better and better and better and you're going to feel the love. Today, I wanted to talk to you about something that I absolutely love, which is cooking with a with a wok. Um, the wok here is my favorite instrument of choice and I found that especially as much as I love to cook, I don't like to cook that long. I like to make a lot of meals that are actually pretty quick and yeah sometimes I'll cook all day and that's fun but for the most part when I'm hungry I just want to eat um, and I found that I pretty much only cook with the wok and there are other things that I use and Nazi pans and stock pots and stuff but what's cool about a wok is it can do almost anything. Um, but the thing is, woks can be a little bit confusing at first. There's a lot of information on them. There's a lot of confusion. There's some things that you really need to know. So I thought I would do sort of a complete definitive guide on cooking with a wok just to make your life easier. So even if you don't have a lot of money and you're like, I just can only afford one piece of equipment, you can buy a wok for 20 or $30 and cook almost anything. I mean, you can steam in here. You can make soups. You can make curries. You can do, of course, stews. You can saute. You can stir fry. You can deep fry. There's so much that you can do in the wok and they're beautiful and there's a lot of really cool uses. So I'm going to show you how to cook on an electric stovetop, um, cooking on a fire, and also this really cool like super high power burner that I got like you see at a Chinese restaurant. So without further ado, let's get into the wok. Waka waka waka! So I think one of the most confusing things about the wok is the seasoning of the wok. And typically when you go just buy a regular pan at a store, you buy it and you cook with it. But if you know anything about things like cast iron, you actually have to season it first. And the same goes for the wok. So the seasoning is it's not for a flavor. The whole point of the seasoning is to create this layer of coated protective. Basically creating this non-stick layer using oil and heat so that way the food does not stick. So this is a carbon steel wok right now. Carbon steel is one of the most popular. They're pretty lightweight. Um, there's a couple things you have to look out for. So first off, this one is a flat bottom wok. Notice the bottom flat. Get it? Flat bottom wok. This is really good for cooking on electric stove tops. Um, also good for just like standard gas stove tops. But like the, when you go to like a Chinese restaurant or something, you see them cooking on those big wok burners, they have a round bottom. So sometimes people accidentally buy the round bottom and they put it on their flat top and it's wobbling around. Um, so you just want to be careful about that. Um, now carbon steel is really good. They're really affordable. They do need to be seasoned. Um, the, I really like this one. The only thing I don't like, um, especially the kind of cooking that I'm doing at this point, is this handle is wood. I'm probably going to try to crack it off because it tends to catch flame when I'm using it in flame, even though this is probably meant for more home cooking on like a regular stove. So if you have one, it's probably not going to be a problem for you. I'm going for maximum experience of the intense flames. So typically when you're seasoning a wok, um, there's a couple different ways you can do it, um, but most woks come with this sort of like anti-rust coating on it. So the first thing you want to do is scrub that down with some soap and wipe that down. Then you put this on a really high flame, the highest flame that you got. You can do it in the oven if you don't have a flame too, and there's some videos you can check out on YouTube. I'm not going to get into that though. Now I just bought a new wok yesterday that I'm going to mess around with today in season. This is a cast iron wok. It's a little bit heavier. I'm still pretty light, really thin, and that is key because when you're cooking with a wok, um, one thing that's really interesting about it is you want it to be super thin because it's almost like the the temperature and the flame that you're controlling it with, like it's almost hitting the food directly. There's this tiny thin, you know, layer between the food so it doesn't actually just hit the flames, but it's almost like cooking directly on a flame. That's what's cool about woks. So I just got this thing yesterday. It's freaking awesome. It cost me 80 bucks. Um, it has no stand, but you basically attach it to a propane tank and when you turn it on, it's just insane. I mean, you can't even see that because it's so light right now, but that is like thousand freaking degrees right there. I don't know how loud, I don't know how high it gets, but it is super intense. All right, so let's talk a little bit about seasoning your wok, the most important first step. So the first thing you want to do is get it super freaking digging hot. So if uh, you can do this outside, that is recommended because it's going to probably smoke your house out. Um, so what I do is I get it hot on all sides, on the bottom, on the sides. I kind of move it around. And what you'll notice is the color is going to start to change. And you want to change the entire color of the wok. So some woks, like carbon steel, might turn blue. Don't be alarmed. You want it to change. Mine's turning more of like sort of a silverish gray kind of 
of vibe going down. And then you get some neutral oil like a vegetable oil or canola. And with a little paper towel, spread it around in a thin layer all over the entire inside of the wok. And also take note, um, even though I did it this way, I found it works better if you have it off the heat first and then you put it on the heat. And then you just kind of burn that and it's going to start to form this really thin, nice non-stick coating. And as you'll notice, I'm doing not just the bottom but all the sides. I'm moving it around um, and do that a couple times. I did it actually about 10 times, but do it at least two or three times. And then some people will actually like just kind of fry up some random bits of stuff. This is like leftover lemongrass and onion skins, and that just kind of helps season it. And you'll notice that I have this really nice seasoning, but the more you cook with it, the better the seasoning will get. Ha. Ah. Look at that, see the way it just kind of floats around, no stick? That's what you're after right there. I just think it's so cool that you're basically cooking right on the flame with just the smallest amount of protection. And you get to control the heat really well. You get to get this really smoky, charred flavor. That's the big thing about using something this powerful, is it gives you this like really smoky, charred flavor too, which is really delicious. But of course, if you're cooking at home, you can still get so much magic out of this walk. For anybody that needs a little bit of a pick-me-up, some joy in their life, I just put out my first full-length album called You and the Everybody Band. It's all fun, high-energy dance music to kind of help you get out of your head and into your body and feel good and just feel inspired and feel that power and energy that you have inside of yourself. You can click the link below to listen to it. It's on Spotify, it's on iTunes. Um, the support so far has been amazing. Thank you everyone who's already reaching out to me, sending videos and, and messages about how much they've enjoyed the music. I make music to make people feel good and it's a way that makes me you know, feel inspired and helps me get over depression, and anxiety, and the things that I struggle with. Um, so you can click the link below to check it. But in honor of this, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. I'm going to be giving away two, not one, but two walks. So people out there, there's two people that are gonna win a brand new walk to be inspired by this video. Just like this one, like a, a nice legit walk. So to win this contest, all you have to do is first stream my album, go on my Instagram, you enjoy life, and there's a post on there, and I'll link to it below, of the album cover. Like it and comment, and tell me what you thought about the album. And two people are going to win a beautiful brand new walk. So I hope this video inspires you to do more walk cooking, and maybe you'll even win one. So even if when you're cooking you find that it's gonna stick a little bit, what's actually happening there is like there might be some sugar. Say you're adding like soy sauce, some of the sugars might caramelize a bit and that will actually just sort of steam out. So you can add some water and you can kind of like deglaze the pan. Um, but one thing that's very important is cleaning the wok, making sure you never use soap. Do not use soap. Most woks, a lot of times people won't even really clean it. Um, if you're good at cooking with a wok, you just take some paper towel, maybe or a towel and just wipe it out real quick and it's good to go. Maybe you deglaze it and pour the liquid it off um, but if you do need to clean it you can soak it in a little bit of water and it should very easily just come off with like a wet paper towel um, and then storing your wok you also want to make sure that this is super freaking dry so what a lot of times people do is they'll put it back on the heat source until it starts smoking a bit and you know that all the water has evaporated some people if you're dealing with rust issues you can actually put just a tiny bit of oil after you cook it and rub it on the surface and that will just help keep the nonstick kind of nice and shiny and avoid the whole rust situation so as I said, there's lots of different ways to use the wok. Um, a lot of people like to deep fry with it, and um, one of my good friends, Derek, over at Make Bistro, and make sure to follow him on Instagram, he is an amazing Thai cook, and he teaches me all of my Thai cooking. So I'm gonna be doing a little bit of Thai stuff in here, mixed in with some other cooking. However, um, Derek and I did a video a while ago where we did some deep frying, and he had this really cool method where he took a bunch of oil in his wok, heated it up, and he just dropped in tofu and let that fry, and we were making a pad Thai at the time. And then, I thought this was like the coolest thing ever, and you see this all over the street in Thailand. Uh, instead of just dumping all the oil out, he actually has this um, little pot and a strainer on top of it, and he just pours most of the oil off, and then you're left, of course, with your tofu, and you can put in anything. That's a great little trick. Um, a lot of times you're seeing Thai food where they'll be like deep frying something and then sauteing that, so they need to be able to get rid of the oil really quickly and then reserve the oil for frying for later, and it's just a cool method to kind of reserve things and keep things rolling. A lot of times I also like to make soups and curries in a wok if I don't want to use the pan because the sides are so high, you can literally make like tomka soups and really any kind of soup you want. You obviously put water in there. I'm not gonna go over how to make soup, uh, but that is something that if you're needing just one pan, you can make soups and you can saute and you can do all kinds of stuff. You can even sweat onions down and things in there and then start you know, adding your liquids and kind of building flavors on that. 
There's a lot of different schools of thought when it comes to wok cooking. Some people say like you really need to just have that high heat because it gives you the smokiness and that's how woks are meant to be cooked on. Um, and there's other people who are like, just, just enjoy it and do the best you can. And I'm one of those people who's like, whatever you got, work what you got, you know? Shake it like it, mean it, and work what you got. And I think that's very important. I don't want to deter anyone just because they don't have these crazy high, you know, thermal insane kitchens that they can't cook with a wok. Um, in my house, for example, I have this really just cheap, kind of simple electric stove, but they're really simple. I was just frying some mushrooms the other day. I just popped it on, turned into about a medium, medium high. I, I don't really like to go high because I feel like by the time I get to high, it's smoking and it takes a long time for it to cool down. So I try to stay at medium, medium high. And I just tossed in a little bit of oil, threw the mushrooms in. And what I do say is when you're cooking with a wok on an electric stove, try to do one thing at a time. Because if you have too much in there and it doesn't have enough heat, you're gonna start steaming stuff and you might not get the sear that you want. You can, of course, throw a ton of stuff in there and, and sear it, but I find a really fun way to cook is just like one thing at a time. So I just threw in some mushrooms, I seared them up, I seasoned them, I threw in some tofu. So I actually just made a little salad here. It's like a Thai salad, fresh herbs, kaffir and lime, shallots, tofu as well as the mushrooms. I also added some possible meat burger. Then I just add my dressing and it's delicious. And this is like a wok slash fresh thing. It's a great way to use a wok to cook things individually and then toss them in the salad. So one thing that is great about a wok, especially if you have the high heat, is that you can cook such simple things and get so much flavor. You get a little bit of that smokiness going on because you're like grilling it essentially, um, and it cooks things in like a minute. So I thought it'd be fun to just make like a little bit of a feast and just make a bunch of different dishes. Here's my little setup. And one sort of key for me here is to have everything out. What's nice, I'm just cooking vegetables right now, so it's pretty dope. So I don't have to worry about cross-contamination and all that kind of like meat stuff. I will be cooking meat very soon, but cabbage, some broccoli and garlic. I've got some peppers and onions, bottle of oil, bottle of water. I have this uh, seasoning sauce, a certain type of soy. I have my homemade chickpea soy sauce. <laughs> soy sauce. Some white pepper, ladle. And this son of a bizzle right here. The goal here is just to keep it super simple. Have what you need prepped out. Each recipe is going to be slightly different. This one's going to be no seasoning. And I'll kind of work my way up and add seasonings as I go. So this thing is already freaking smoking after about two seconds of being on. So in goes the oil. In goes the peppers. Cool little trick too is to have this thing of water. So you can kind of steam things a little bit. If you're feeling like they're getting a little too much char, Steam them a little bit, that'll help it cook. Oh, this thing really evaporates water like instantly. And then you can always add a little bit more oil if you need to. Broccoli, I'm gonna try something a little bit different. I'm gonna do more of a steam. I like to cook in general inside this way. Add water. And it's kind of like a hack steam. So as that water steams away, we'll cook the broccoli just a little bit. And then I'll add my oil, I'll add a little bit of garlic during this process to kind of infuse it in there. And then it'll be real quick, add a little soy sauce and bazing and bazoom. So all this broccoli really cooked in a minute and I turn the heat off now because of course I don't want the garlic to burn. I also don't want the broccoli to burn. I added a little water. If it feels like it's too hot, you can just squirt it in. A little water, help cool the temperature down. Added some white pepper. And then I'm just gonna throw in soy sauce. I like to put soy sauce in at the very end and usually when the heat's off, because otherwise it can caramelize too fast and burn a bit and stick. Mmm. Yeah. Hmm. That's really good. Some chicken thighs marinated in a little bit of thin soy, white pepper, a little cornstarch, a little baking soda, and uh, that's pretty much it. A little bit of oil. He did say, the guy at the wok store, Never put meat into a wok unless it is smoking. You want it to be smoking, kind of activates the nonstick. And you can already tell there's no way that's not going to be amazing. <laughs> I'm like, how could it not be first? Okay. Houston, give me a rating. Houston, may I? It's actually a really great way to get crispy chicken. It's not deep frying it by any means, but just adding a little bit of oil, and then as the fat renders off the chicken, it kind of cooks in its own fat. Ah. At the very end, I just toss in some soy sauce and a little bit of garlic. 
just the garlic fries up so fast, but then I added a little bit of water and it kind of makes this amazing sauce here. How good does that look? Chicken, best chicken of my life, is an understatement. <laughs> so it is a big no-no to put in the sauce right away unless you have enough liquid, because the sauce is going to burn. There are sugars in soy sauce that are going to burn. They're going to mess with your non-stick. So what I like to do is I saute everything together. I don't even season it. Maybe a little bit of salt before, and you know, of course you can add spices, but I don't really add salt until the very end. What I do is I cook everything, get it to where I want it, and then at the very end, I start adding soy sauce and maybe fish sauce and whatever kind of you know umami-laden sauces and vinegars that I want. And that way, just I even honestly turn the heat off typically, um, unless I have more water where it will boil a little bit, but I'll, if I'm setting a little bit, I turn the heat off and then just mix it in at the very end. And the residual heat will cook the sauce a little bit. But to really go to school on the walk, I wanted to call up my buddy Derek, um, who just cooked so much on the walk. And he was kind of helping me with this dish that I had recently at this really amazing uh, restaurant in Denver. It's probably the only Thai place that I found that's like legit, called Subipa. And I had this uh, beef dish that had kefir lime leaves in it. And I was so amazed by how good it was. Um, so I was talking to Derek about it, and he gave me some pointers on how to make this thing. So I have... Red pepper, eggplant, shallots, ginger, a little paste of turmeric, chili, garlic, some beef marinated in cornstarch, baking soda, some soy, kefir lime, some fresh herbs, some of this uh, fish sauce, soy sauce. You know what I actually, now, now that I'm looking at your, the prep there, what I would probably do, just thinking of it, like all that eggplants and peppers there, I would probably add like oil to the wok and like smoke the f out of those alone first and then remove them. I don't think I'm gonna sure. smoke. You said smoke. I'm gonna smoke the eggplant. Part of this video is to just like kind of have fun and try new things and also learn more about the walk myself because I, I do use this more than anything, but I realize I don't know that much about it. Yeah. And it's like, I probably cook 90% of my meals on this thing. Oh yeah, like that. And then you stir that and the steam helps it like well like not adding enough water to where it's boiling, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's so like it, like, it just keeps buying you time, and if you're on something like an open fire where you have no access to changing the flame, that's the only way you're gonna cool down the pan. Yeah, this is gonna be so good. Ugh, get out of there, son of a bitch. Oh yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna, yeah, get this out. You said if you have oil in there, put the paste in right now, and then like stir it for a little bit until it, until you like can smell the garlic. Literally, that's it. Oh. That quick, and then throw in the shallots and ginger. Yeah, I, I can see what it sounds like when you put that in. So I can't really tell how hot it is. It's like it's. The sound smells. Oh my god, it smells so good. I feel like I'm back in like Vietnam, actually. Yeah, go go ginger and shallot right now, cause it's nice to wilt like the well. I'm thinking you will that ginger down a little bit and the flavor gets to the bottom. Holy shit, this smells good. Kefir going in. You can obviously, you can tear those two to release more flavor, but it'll not. I tore them up a little bit. You had mentioned yeah. that. Oh, look at the, look at the, see the colors that just happened? Just, yeah. The paste, you know, one thing that I always see you doing that I don't mess around with much is like the paste in the stir fry. Like, I'll, I'll cut up garlic and stuff, but I rarely just make like a paste, and that seems to be the, oh my god, this is gonna be crazy. <laughs> I mean, a pinch of sugar if you have it, and not, I'm not even I'm talking like a pinch of like a teaspoon of sugar. Um, no sugar, but oh and man. Then, yeah, I mean just like you just pick up pick up some of that last stuff with water and, and you're done. And wow, this is well, I mean this heat wasn't like as high as the other one, but like wok cooking. I mean it's something that should be done in like you know one to five minutes or less. Like it's it's quick. It's like it's. Fast food. And I'm just looking at this dish in between the turmeric with the, the paste of the turmeric and the beef turning a little bit orange and the smells and the kefir lime and the shallots. It was just, my mouth was just in, in complete love. I finished it off with a little bit of cilantro and of course some lime. You could use some sort of chili vinegar or something. It was 
the, the, the beef was so freaking tender. It's like that really tender, delicious beef that you get at like a Chinese restaurant. Um, the fragrances were absolutely mind freaking blowing. My brain is still like, I'm still picking it up from the next door neighbor's yard, how much blown my mind was. I served it over some jasmine rice. Well, I think that is it. Thank you all for enjoying this walk video. Um, please leave any tips. Of course, you can like the video and subscribe and all that fun stuff. But if you have tips for walk cooking, I still have so much to learn. Um, just from doing this video, I learned so much about seasoning the walks, about you know different types of temperature elements, different types of walks, and I still have so much to learn. I'm not an expert by any means, um, but I do sincerely hope this video helped you get a better understanding of how to use a walk. The thing that I consider to be probably the most versatile and amazing tool in the kitchen. So if you need one piece of equipment, go get yourself a walk and you will be very happy.